right, navigators, welcome to Wednesday Night Battle Station. Let's get ready for our pledges. Everyone stand up nice, tall, and straight. Right hand over your chest. Salute the flag. Wait for the command. Repeat after me. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Let's turn our attention to God's Word. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. Stay standing, I have a couple songs. All right, we're gonna have a couple songs. Jesus loves me in deep and wide. Jesus loves me in deep and wide. Stand up straight and sing out. I don't care if you're at home in front of your parents. Let's go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Take your Bibles to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. We're going to continue with our next lesson with Gideon. And it's on Gideon's fleece. Tonight's lesson is on Gideon's fleece. Judges chapter 6. Begin in verse number 36. So what has happened? God has found Gideon in hiding. God has called him out for hiding to get on not just out in the public, but out in front, on the front lines as a leader and a commander and a deliverer for Israel. And he has torn down the altars and cut down the groves dedicated to Baal, planted in his settlement by his people. And he has survived their anger, and they're calling for his destruction. And Gideon's father says, let Baal speak for himself. This is his altar. If he be a god, let him speak. And Gideon gets a new name, Jerubbabel, because Baal would not speak on behalf of himself when Gideon threw down the altar of Baal. And he sends a call out and raises an army to fight against the Midianites and the Amalekites that have gathered in the Jezreel Valley. And that's where we pick up here. So Gideon has answered God's call. Gideon has built his altar. 
in the place of the altar of Baal. And he has sent out messengers to raise an army. And this is a passage here where Gideon and God have a conversation. Gideon speaking to God and God giving his answer through the signs that Gideon asked for. Verse number 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. Now, if thou hast said. God has said that several occasions and many times. However, Gideon, though initially he questions the message of God, he questions the word of God, Gideon nonetheless does fulfill the word of God. He built an altar. He tore an altar down. He cut a grove down. He built an altar. He did leave the threshing floor. He did step out and start taking steps to call and raise the army to which he would lead to deliver Israel. But here again we find Gideon. If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand. He said he would deliver Israel. But he said if you want to do it through me and if you want to do it by me as thou hast said. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then I shall know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. I believe we need to pay attention to the phrase, by mine hand. I think Gideon understands through the appearance of this angel of the Lord and his interaction with God, that God will save Israel but I think sometimes perhaps Gideon is more in doubt of himself and wondering if God has chosen the right man. That has been the, the set go since the initial interaction with God. Me? No, I'm not good enough. I'm the least. Are you sure you want to use me, God? I know you'll do it, but are you sure you want to use me? He said, let the fleece be wet and all the earth and the ground around the fleece be dry. And if that's the case, I shall know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. So we just happen to have a sample here of a fleece. So Gideon takes his fleece, and he says, Let the dew be upon it and not upon the ground. So Gideon throws his fleece and sets his fleece upon the earth. And it was so, in verse 38, For he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. So the fleece itself contained so much water, he filled a bowl full of the dew that was given. He wrenched the fleece, and every drop of water that filled that bowl was a message and a sign saying, Hey, my word is full, my word is complete, there's so much power and essence in my word, and he answers Gideon's prayer. He answers Gideon's plea with this sign with the dew-soaked fleece. But the story does not end there in that prayer with that morning answer to that prayer of the wet fleece. We go to verse number 39. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me. I will speak but this once. Gideon saying, just one more try, just one more test. Don't be angry with me. Perhaps he's asking God not to be angry with his doubt, with his fear, with his mortality. Be not angry with me, but let me speak but once. He's already spoken many times. He's already told God to, to check and make sure he's talking to the right guy. And he just got through spending a whole night going out the next day. Knowing, I think Gideon possibly knew that that fleece would be wet. But he says, once more, let's flip the other side of the coin. Don't be angry with me in my fear or my anxiety or my mortality. But let me speak just once more upon the matter. I will pray thee, but this once with the fleece, let it now be dry only upon the fleece. And upon all the ground, let there be dew. So he flipped it. Let only the fleece be wet and the ground be dry. Now he said, let the ground be wet and the fleece be dry. And God did so that night. For it was dry upon the fleece only. And there was 
do on all the ground. Gideon seems to obey God, but he always sees a need for God to use someone beside him. Gideon says, I can't, or please, show me a sign. Encourage me in what you have said. Assure me of what you have said. Not that you will do what you say, but that you want me, or that you will do what you have said you will do by using me. And we see time and time again through the story of Gideon, God seems to patiently remove the excuses and the doubt from Gideon's heart and Gideon's mind. And we can't be too harsh upon Gideon ourselves. For we have the scriptures, but still we delay. We have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord, and we have the Holy Spirit in our heart and our lives, but we still test God for the will and course of our life. There's no real excuse to eliminate us from doing what God has called us to do. Only the answer of, no, I won't. And though we see Gideon asking for signs, and we see Gideon wanting to God to double check whom he's speaking to and whom he wants to use, we do see Gideon fulfilling what God has asked him to do, and we never see Gideon telling God no. So, to take a lesson on the positive side, let's always say yes, and let's always do what God has called us to do. But take a lesson from Gideon on the matter of faith, what God has said God needs. God has already done the background check. He already knows the qualifications of the servant that he will pick and he will choose. All that servant needs to do is just go and do. And we'll be back next week with the rest of the story of Gideon.